All right, so the showdown you guys and myself have been waiting for, the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus G14 versus the Asus ProArt PX13. Two laptops with similar price point, sizing, but different features and functionality. Let's see which one is right for you. Now, first and foremost, let's take a look at the weight and thickness of these two devices, as well as the form factor. You can see, obviously, that the G14 is a 14 inch screen, so it's gonna be a little bit larger of a form factor on the device. And you can see that there's gonna be a little bit more width on the device as well. Now, next thing we wanna do is flip the laptop over and take a look at the bottom cover. As you can see, it looks kind of similar here with the vent. However, as you take a look closer, you can see that there's a ventilation here and here. And then as you get closer, this is actually blocked off in the middle and you have vent ports there on each side as well. And then you have the bottom facing speakers. Now, the PX13 is a two-in-one laptop and is pen compatible with the Asus ProArt Pen 2.0. And later in the video, I'm gonna show that pen functionality for you so you can see if that's be an ad advantage to you as a user of this device. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the upgrade path while we have the laptops turned over. For the Republic Gamer G14, there's no upgrade path for the RAM and you can upgrade one M.2 slot. There is an available M.2 slot that contains the boot drive. You can swap that out for more storage. Now also the PX13 is a similar situation, 32 gigs of RAM, that boot drive is swappable, but no upgradable RAM, just the swappable M.2 drive. Now let's talk about another thing in regards to the uh, specs and performance, and that is the maximum graphics power. The maximum graphics power is the allowable power that is sent to the GPU from the system. The maximum allowable graphics power for the G14 is 90 watts. The PX13 is 95 watts. So keep that in mind later in the video when we dive into the performance benchmarks and how this little guy here performs compared to the G14. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, the next thing I wanna do is go ahead, turn these laptops up on their side and check out the port connectivity of the G14 versus the PX13. Now, first and foremost, you can see that we have micro SD card reader for both laptops. USB type A and USB type C. Now our power button is on the right side. I don't love this on the PX13. I like the interior power button on the G14. I accidentally bumped the power button quite a bit on the PX13. Jumping over to the other side, we have our HDMI power port, USB-C, and then we have a USB-A and headphone jack. So a little bit of slight difference there between the G14 and the PX13. Now, let's go ahead and open up these devices, which have both CNC aluminum chassis, really nice. You can see if I press a little on the top, they're both nice rigid devices. Opening and closing the screen with one hand is done very easily for both devices. Scoot it over a little bit and check the screen bounce between the two. They bounce for about the same time, maybe the G14 a tiny bit longer. Really good stiff uh, screen on both of the devices. Uh, but then of course, like I said, the PX13 goes two in one style. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we do have that power button here on the interior of the G14. I like that a lot better because where the power button's positioned on the G on the PX13 is whenever I go to pull the laptop towards me, uh, before you get a conscious on where that is, you end up pushing that button a lot and it ends up shutting off your computer, which is pretty annoying, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, now we're gonna look at the keyboard deck. Now that we're inside the laptops here, you can see that we have very similar size on the trackpad. Um, but then the keyboard deck is going to be an RGB keyboard on the G14 and a non-RGB backlit keyboard on the PX13. Now we have some differences, of course. We have some small upward facing supporting speakers. Uh, and then we have our Asus ROG keys up here on the top to control volume and mute your microphone very quickly as well, which is helpful if you're gaming to be able to just quickly mute your microphone or turn off uh, the sound. Now, let's do a quick audio sample. You did see both laptops had downward facing speakers, but then of course we have the upward facing supporting speakers in the G14. Here's a difference between the audio on each device. And 
of course, they both have webcams on the top bezel. Here's a sample of the webcam so you can see in here what that's like in use. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 from 2024, and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Asus ProArt PX13, and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And then looking at the keyboards, they are nearly identical in regards to the look and feel of them. They have the same size keys. They type very nicely, nice medium key travel. And then the trackpads sound very similar. The big difference is going to be the dial on the Asus ProArt PX13. I have a full video review of this device with my use of the dial, my thoughts on the dial. I'm not gonna shove that into this review. It would make it way too long. So if you wanna get my full thoughts on the dial and more deep thoughts on the pen compatibility, I will throw up some B-roll of the pen in use so you can see what the pen is like in use. Um, but if you want in-depth review on that, go ahead and check out the full review. I'm going to just cover the comparative differences between these two um, in this one. Now, taking a look at the screen, the PX13 comes with a 3K OLED display, 2880 by 1800 at 60 hertz refresh rate with a 497 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 96% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0 0.91. For the G14, we have a 3K Nebula HDR display at 120 hertz refresh rate. So we have much better refresh rate, double the refresh rate on the G14, which I know a lot of creators have expressed frustration with the 60 hertz refresh rate on the PX13. So that could be an advantage to you. 479 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 1.25. And so for the PX13 versus the G14, you can see we have a slightly better color accuracy on the PX13, but we have the higher refresh rate on the G14. Definitely something to keep in mind. I keep thinking this is a touchscreen that's totally throwing me off. Don't know why I keep thinking that. Maybe I've been using the PX13 for too long. Okay, the next thing I wanna take a look at, of course, is battery life. So we have about 12 hours of battery life for productivity, 10 hours for streaming video playback out of the G14. For the PX13, nine hour, uh, 11 hours for productivity, nine hours and 46 minutes for streaming video playback. Now we have the Ryzen AI9 HX370 on the chipset for the PX13. And for the G14, we have the Ryzen 9 8945 HS. So slightly different chipsets giving us slightly different battery, battery life results. It's all at 20% screen brightness, battery saver mode turned on, GPU turned off. That's how I'm accomplishing those battery lives. Now, the next thing I wanna look at is the thermal results. The G14, how does it handle thermal management? You can see that when we're exporting a 4K nine minute clip out of Premiere Pro, 48 to 58 decibels of fan noise at an 86 to 92 degrees Celsius on the CPU temp. For the PX13, that same export, 55 decibels on the fan noise, 75 degrees Celsius on the thermal temperatures. So it looks like we're getting much better thermal management out of the PX13. Curious if it's gonna give us good results and performance in just a minute later in the video. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I'm always so grateful you all use those links. So weight and thickness of these two devices, they have very similar build quality and materials. So they're gonna be pretty close in weight and in thickness. Uh, it really just depends on your needs between these two devices. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the performance. For these two devices, as I mentioned, the G14 comes with the Ryzen 9 8945 HS, 32 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 4070. That's the price point I aimed for for this device, the 4070. It's about uh, anywhere from 1599 to 1899, depending on the uh, when you find it online. For the PX13, that similar price point for the RTX 4060 version. That's the highest GPU that you can get on this device. So I'm comparing really the optimal GPU and price point for the G14, the one I think is the best, to the top of the line for the PX13. And going in and taking a look at the simulated benchmarks, you can see the differences for single core and multi-core for Geekbench with the slight differing CPU between kind of their newer AI CPU versus you know their older classic HS CPU, and it still says Ryzen AI 9, but it's marketing. Okay, anyway, 32 gigs of RAM for both devices. So pretty much neck and neck. And then the GPU is the RTX 4070 versus the 4060, but I'll also have the 4050 listed from the ProArt as well. Now going ahead from there and looking down at the 3D modeling benchmarks, you can see that there's going to be an advantage in PTC Creo and Autodesk Maya 
for the for the G14. Um, we're seeing slightly better scores, and that is to be expected with the RTX 4070. If we could get the 4070 and the PX13, I think we'd be doing really good. However, regionally in the US, we only have up to the RTX 4060 available. And I wanted to compare laptops that were similar in price point um, for your buying decision. Next thing to take a look at is Photoshop. We have an 8,249 for the 4050 PX13 and an 8,301 for the 4060 PX13. Looking at Photoshop for the G14, 7,248. So actually you're gonna get a better Photoshop laptop out of the PX13, keep that in mind, okay? Now moving down the line to video editing, the export time for the G14, 4K to 4K, two minutes and 19 seconds out of the G14. For the RTX 4060 version of the PX13, two minutes and 46 seconds. Now in regards to Premiere Pro playback, for the RTX 4060, zero drop frames for 4K full quality, 6K B-RAW full quality, eight drop frames, 6K red footage, 1,033. Looking at the G14, zero drop frames, full quality playback. 6K B-RAW, 43 drop frames, 6K red footage, 1,136. So you actually get better playback out of the RTX 4060 than you do the G14. Now remember, the maximum graphics power of the PX13 is 95 watts versus the G14 at 90 watts. So you have a little bit more power running to that RTX 4060, which makes it a little bit more competitive than if we had probably equal or lesser maximum graphics power on the PX13. So pretty interesting stuff. Now going ahead and looking at the 6K export time, the G14, 15 minutes and 19 seconds for 6K B-RAW versus the 18 minutes and 42 seconds from the RTX 4060 of the PX13. So you're gonna have a better export time out of the G14. Now punch for punch, the G14 is a classic and it was really new to, it was, so punch for punch, the G14 is a classic. However, it was newly redesigned this year. And I would say that they really stepped it up. They compacted the device, made it thinner, lighter, more on the go friendly, but still give us great performance and solid battery life. The PX13 shares a similar design as you look in from the top down. Um, however, it is a bit different in size being the 13 inch form factor and a two in one laptop. If you want to have the great features like the pen compatibility and the dial, the PX13 is set apart from the G14, absolutely. However, punch for punch, you're gonna get more performance out of the G14 with a higher refresh rate on the screen, which could be advantageous to you. So really it's gonna be your choice and I hope you have the objective data to make the right buying decision for your needs. Remember, links are in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for tons more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.